So hello from Green Mopeds in South West London. So today we're on a forthcoming bike into the UK, which is by Segway, or Segway 9Bot, as they are now called. Um, most people probably know about Segway. They are the, uh, well, originally in about 1990 or 1999, I think it was, they were doing um, these sort of self-leveling uh, two-wheel things that you used to see going around town on tours and things like that two wheelers electric um, then they have merged with a company called Ninebot uh, and they're out of China so I think they've now got uh, dual HQs one in I think it's Houston in the US and then uh, over in China uh, they now do a lot more than just that stand on Segway that uh, people have seen so they do all sorts of stuff that's all electric based. Um, this is one of the first of their forays into vehicles. Um, so the E110S is its uh, name. Um, the 110, someone said, oh, does that mean it's sort of a 110cc equivalent? Um, I think the short answer is no. It's a 50cc equivalent, so an L1E bike, 28 mile an hour. Uh, they have said that this will be able to be de-restricted um, through the app, I imagine, because they've got quite an extensive app. Um, they're sort of putting NIU in the shade, to be honest, with what their app is doing. Uh, but we'll come on to that more in the static review, actually. Uh, but yeah, this bike is uh, de-restrictable, which, um, bearing in mind, there are not a lot of choices in the de-restriction de market. Uh, in this sort of class, there is um, Super Soccer CUX, which, although is de restrictable, um, not sure how long that will carry on for, and certainly they don't particularly like you doing it. Uh, then you've got some of the Adia bikes, the G5 and the uh, C1S, and I even think the Elex, you can de restrict all of those. Um, but this is also de-restrictable. Um, if you are doing your research, the one that you should sort of compare this to, or now make you look at this because it's actually not available, is the NQI Sport, sorry, NQI SR or ER, which NIU in the UK, or Sinis, the importer in the UK, has now just decided not to bring in anymore. So they've cancelled the NQIs, the 28 mile an hour uh, bikes, uh, they are now moving to um, the MQI GTs or the UQI GTs. That's their sort of choice around the 28 mile an hour bike or the little MQI Plus Sport. Okay, so you, uh, if you want a bike that's sort of uh, N series size or Horwin EK1 size, which is its other competitor, or your dear G5 size, uh, this is where the, these are fitting. So it's not a tiny, tiny little moped like an MQI Plus Sport. This is 12 inch wheels, um, and you would be comparing this to an EK1, or your dear G5. Um, the MQI GTs Model 30s, they are big, physically big. I mean, this, this has got an impressively big seat, I would add, but uh, just in pretty much every other dimension, the MQI GTs are big bikes physically. So um, you would uh, possibly not compare that. So in conclusion, in if you are to compare any bike with this, it's going to be a Horwin EK1 or a um, Yadir G5. Those would be the ones to look at. There's obviously a fair difference in price with those. So a Horwin EK1 is getting on to the top end of £2,000. Um, this is in the middle, but 2599 And then you've got the G5 at 2029 Okay, But there are reasons to pick one over the other, that's for sure. Um, so let's start more with this bike. So this is, um, interestingly, 
1500 watt continuous uh, two horsepower that is um, again if you were to compare that uh, an EK1 is more uh, your dear G5 is more uh, also what's interesting about it is it's 60 volt uh, sorry <laughs> it's 48 volt and if you compare that to a Horwin EK1 that is 72 volt and a Yadir G5 is 60 volt so you've probably seen in my other reviews me going on about why do people not go to 72 volt or whatever um, the reason that you want higher voltage is a bit of acceleration and also uh, kilowatt hours because volts give you in combination with amp hours give you kilowatt hours and subsequently because this is only 48 volt and it's also only 30 amp hours that gives you 1.4 kilowatt hours okay again compare that to a uh, your dear G5 that's 1.8 but if you compare it to a EK1 that's 2.8 so range, this is going to be the lowest of the three. Uh, we're now going to take it up our little test hill to see how it deals with that, being only 1500 watt continuous. So uh, let's see how we get on going up here. Um, it does have three modes. Uh, one gives you 16 miles an hour, I think. Two gives you sort of low 20s. And three gives you 28. Okay, so I'm in mode three now, going up this hill, which you've seen before if you've watched any of my other videos. And as you can see, it's losing it, getting towards the top. So that is a direct result of 1500 watt continuous. Look at that, just about made it. Which is interesting uh, if you live in a place with hilly, uh, lots of hills. And that was a one in seven. Um, gradient okay 14% I think it was so uh, that in certain, certain circumstances might tell you all you need to know about choosing this bike okay so um, so the other thing is this uh, kilowatt hour thing so um, yeah as I said this is basically half it's going to do half the range if all things were being equal okay this has got a lower uh, rated uh, motor anyway as in an EK1 has 2.8 kilowatts um, I never got a definitive answer over what the maximum power was of this bike but um, if it's 1500 watts continuous it's probably going to be two at maximum uh, so obviously then the EK1 and in fact the Udea are more powerful in terms of uh, top power maximum power um, so that will work in its favor if you have a low rated battery but even so with 1.4 kilowatts versus 2.8 kilowatts of an ek1 40 amp hour battery that is uh, and 1.8 kilowatts on a Yadir g5 um, you can see where this is going to likely fit in terms of range okay so to put it in another way this is a sort of short hop, nipping around town sort of thing. Um, it's got a WMTC range, and we can go into that a little bit, of uh, 45 kilometers. So WMTC are like the official, um, you know, can buy the, the official entity for giving you a truly comparable uh, rating of things like range. Okay, so... This is not just you know me riding around and saying what well, it did this for me. This is actually testing it. So WMTC are saying 45 kilometers, which is just over 30. So that is um, obviously that's like a combined reading what you used to get on cars. Uh, so if they're saying 30 and you knock off your 20%, which is what we always do, you're down to 24. Evolution. Uh, you're down to sort of mid 20s. Okay, so um, I guess what we're saying is this is probably more an inner city nipping around town um, 
because if you're you know you high 20s uh, sorry mid 20s you're talking about um you know 10 miles there and back so uh i mean it might it could be fine for certain people anyway um so this is the dash as we're here it's very it's a very nice looking bike i would say that and look at the floor space there's a lot of floor space the battery is under the floor so the 48 volt battery is under the floor there um, and the result of that is 27 litres of space. So that is pretty much two open face helmets under the seat. So other than something like a Silence SO1, this is the next best thing for storage. Okay, so um, not full face, but you should get two open face helmets in it. Okay, so again, that's good. And then when you see the... Uh, static review you will see how large this seat is it is long um, this bike is 1.86 uh, meters in length and the seat is also flat and when you see us we'll put it next to a g5 which has also got a flat seat um, and also got storage under the seat but it makes that g5 seat look not tiny but you know you can comfortably fit two people in the on this bike very easily uh, as yet there is uh, no rack although one is coming uh, so uh, that'll be something that will give you more storage but yeah it's a long seat um, also you see you've got a cubby hole um, bag hook and all that sort of stuff and one of the other things I wanted to show you well, we're gonna have to stop for that is you'll see on the dash it says Bluetooth um, on their app, as I said, if you thought that uh, NIU had a lot in their app, then you need to look at this one. <laughs> one of the things it has, which I will now show you, um, is programmable regen. Right, so as you can see, I left, let off, I've got no regen on, and I'm cruising. I'm cruising along 20, 27, it will slow down and everything like that. You see the green there is that I am actively uh, braking and therefore I've got regen going. Okay, so that's, that is regen regardless of what I do. Okay, so you're getting regen regardless of what I do. Okay, and that, but then it's also got programmable regen and it's also got passive regen. Okay, so hopefully you can see that. So this is the bike, this is the app on the bike. I'm got, not going to go through all of it. But here you can see you've got under regenerative power, I could, I've actually it's disabled at the moment. So as you saw, when I let, uh, let go of the throttle there, um, the blue line around the edge didn't change. Well, when I hit the brakes, it went green, which meant that is active regen. I squeezed the brake and it did regen. If I now turn this on, and it will do it straight away, I've now turned on strong passive regen and strong regen in general. Okay, so you'll see when I ride this now, what will happen when I uh, uh, coast and also when I um, press the brake. Uh, in actual fact, because it is going to be quite aggressive, let's see if I should do this on a road. Okay, what I've sort of noticed though, when you put on regen, it's, it does seem to slow down performance a little bit. Um, but anyway, uh, so that's just one of the things it can do. Uh, there is a whole, there's an airlock system. Airlock means uh, it can unlock the, unlock the bike just by going near it. Um, uh, it's obviously got an alarm. It's got GPS. You can also uh, plug in your, uh, uh, program in your batteries into the app. Um, so you can, sorry, battery. Um, so you can keep track of that. Um, so let's see. Okay, so I'm cruising along right now. Okay, 27 miles an hour. You see, regen is kicking in, and it is slowing me down. Right, I'm not doing anything. It's literally slowing me down. Okay, so as I've said to a, a few people, if you could pick certain features of lots of these bikes you could easily make the ultimate bike and that is obviously the fact that you can tune it down a little bit in case you think it's too aggressive is uh, is a good thing 
Um, but there's only one other bike that I know that gives you this passive regen, which is, and it, you can also turn it off on that bike as well. That's an Ascol. Ascol's, uh, the ES3s especially. There is a switch. See, I'm doing it again now. Um, see, that's pretty aggressive. Okay. So, um, yeah, quite a good thing. Yeah. So the only other bike that I know is an Ascol ES2 and 3, I think. They, they have the ability to turn on passive regen um, so that it will, through coasting, also do regen. Okay. <coughs> and it is quite aggressive, especially if you do also touch the brakes. It seems to add to the brakes. Okay. So, um, yeah, that's an interesting little thing. And as I said, this around here is showing you uh, when the regen is active. This sort of reminds me a bit of what's going on on a Horwin EK1 or EK3. This changes colour when you're accelerating on the Horwin, whereas on this one it's telling you when you are using regen. Okay, so there we go. We're in mode 3, accelerating away. Um, you know, I'm not saying it's a bad bike. I'm just saying that um, 48 volt, 30 amp hours. I don't know why people are doing 48 volt bikes anymore okay and uh, just think if you just turn this into a 48 uh, from a 48 volt to a 60 volt that is 25 increase 25 percent increase in your kilowatt hours just by doing that because it's it's a multiple okay so um yeah okay i mean that there are other 48 volt bikes available i'm, I'm not totally dismissing it and and IU MQI GT Model 30, Model 45, they are 48 volt. UQI GT Pro, that's 48 volt. Um, I'm just saying that new bikes, I get more and more surprised that they're doing it. Okay. Um, just as an aside, there is a uh, 125cc version uh, which is coming with two batteries. Um, so that will deal with. Uh, the range thing okay so in terms of colors there are four colors uh, again from a, a design perspective and how the bike looks it's very nice um, it does have a light on the center of the bike so your light is facing forward regardless of what you're doing on the handlebars um, as I've said before, some people prefer the light to be on your handlebars so that you can, you know, when you turn the handlebars, your light points into the corner. Um, it also uh, has the indicators there as well, um, which uh, are on this, um, are on the, uh, at the bottom of the bike. Um, they are not silent, you'll be pleased to know, so you can hear them. Um, bit of a ping that goes on then when you, uh, when you do that. I mean, it's very clean. I mean, there's, you know, there's not a lot of uh, clutter here. It's also got cruise control as well. Um, as to whether you're going to actually have uh, the ability to use that is another matter. And uh, in the cubby hole down there, you do have a USB port like you would expect um, so yeah as I said on the app you can open the seat um, you can uh, set the alarm you can do everything on the app it is quite impressive and I you should take note okay so in terms of pricing um, 2599 so as I said that puts it that literally if, if the NQI um, ER and SR was still available, or specifically the uh, SR, this would literally be about the same price, and that would be uh, 1.8 kilowatt hours, so just a little bit more, um, but no storage like this anyway, 27 litres of storage. Okay, so um, that is that is somewhere where you would, uh, you would compare this bike, but for 2599, you are comparing it to possibly a Yadir G5, a 2029. Uh, more range on that one, probably a little bit. And 
no regen, no app, although the, the app's coming, I've been reliably informed. Um, the EK1, the CUX is uh, smaller, although, you know, still a fine bike, about the same price actually, uh, but that's 60 volt, so 60 volt, 30 amp hours, so that would be, again, the same sort of kilowatt hours as a Yadir G5, okay? So, um, and then the EK1, as I said, is more like 2,900, but you are getting twice the kilowatt hours and you're also getting 72 volts. So acceleration and, for example, getting up that hill that I showed you, um, you would get more for your money, but you've paid more. Okay, so uh, it is going on the grant. Um, I'm not sure if that price is because the grant process hasn't yet been completed i was told this morning uh so that will happen eventually but just not at the moment okay so i mean essentially that's it um bikes at this level are all pretty similar um but different in certain ways in summary i would say if you want storage um you want a bike that will you know, be fine for nipping around in town, um, you know, when you can't go that fast anyway. Um, and you like some of the features it's got, like regen. I mean, it is the first bike that has a programmable regen, um, that we do anyway, um, for two and a half thousand pounds or 2,600 pounds. This could be a perfect bike for you. All right, so uh, please feel free to uh, contact us at hello at green-mopeds.com if you have any questions. And uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel for more reviews of other bikes as they come available. And uh, thanks very much.